A new book sheds light on the tense relationship between President Dwight D. Eisenhower and Chief Supreme Court Justice Earl Warren. In Eisenhower v. Warren, author James Simon talks about how their feud impacted the future of the modern civil rights movement with some implications for today. Professor Simon is the Dean Emeritus at New York Law School and the author of nine books, and he joins us now via Skype. Great to have you, sir. Very glad to be here. So first, remind our audience um, the significance of the Warren Court and some of the um, decisions that came down during that time. Well, the Warren Court is probably most uh, famously known for Brown v. Board of Education, which is a central focus of my book, in which the court said that school segregation was un unconstitutional under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Uh, so that's uh, one of the main uh, decisions. They had later decisions also striking down racial discrimination in voting and in uh, other uh, public uh, uh, facilities. They also, the Warren Court was very important in uh, giving new protections to uh, criminal defendants. The so-called Miranda warnings came out of the Warren Court. So the Warren Court uh, was very important in terms of both uh, civil rights and civil liberties, both of which are subject of my book. And Warren was the first appointment uh, to the Supreme Court by President Eisenhower, and yet their relationship grew tense. Tell us about that. That's correct. Uh, Eisenhower, uh, shortly after becoming president, uh, appointed Warren Chief Justice. Warren had uh, had campaigned for him in the 1952 uh, 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 presidential uh, campaign, and uh, Eisenhower thought that Warren would provide leadership and moderate Republican values and certainly integrity to the court, something that he thought had been lacking. And so they were very, very uh, close uh, initially, but once the Brown decision was under deliberation. Uh, the decision, the relationship between Eisenhower and, and Warren began to fray. And it began to fray at a White House dinner in which Warren was invited to sit next to Eisenhower. And Eisenhower told him how great the attorney for South Carolina, who had just argued the case uh, in Brown v. Board, was. His name was John W. Davis. And then he took him aside, Eisenhower took Warren aside, and basically said, you know, you should have some sympathy for these white uh, parents in the South. They really aren't bad people. They just don't want their little, sweet little girls to go to school with overgrown uh, Negro uh, boys. And that wow. was a very racist decision, and Warren never forgave him for that. How unusual is it for a president, you know, then or now, to sort of really put, try to put their thumb on the scales um, with the chief justice like that? Well, it's not clear that he was trying to put the thumb on the scales. Though certainly, Eisenhower supporters said he had no intention of lobbying in that uh, situation. But it it appeared that way to Warren, and I think it's it's highly unusual, perhaps unprecedented. By the way. Eisenhower was, went on to de complete the desegregation of the military and of schools on military bases and so on. So he was not uh, against uh, racial uh, desegregation. He just thought that Brown perhaps went too fast and too far. He was more of an incrementalist. Warren was more of a let's, let's get this done and move forward. Exactly so, yes. The other thing that that this whole um, this whole story and historical situation reminds me of is the fact that you know presidents don't always get what they think that they're getting in the Supreme Court nominees that they select. Is that the case here with Eisenhower and Warren? Well, that's a perfect example that Eisenhower really later said, and he said it in private, not in public, that he thought uh, appointing Eisen uh, Warren was a very big mistake. And there are others later that, that have, have, have fooled or surprised the presidents who, who appointed them. You can think in, in more recent years, uh, uh, John Paul Stevens was appointed by the Republican President Ford and became quite liberal. 
Uh, Harry Blackman, appointed by President Nixon, became quite liberal. David Souter, appointed by the first President Bush, became quite liberal. These days, however, that's less likely to happen because of our polarized political climate. The people advising the president tend to vet the potential candidates very, very carefully. And you see that certainly with um, this president's picks, which were all essentially sort of pre-selected um, by Heritage Foundation and others to make sure that they carefully matched a certain judicial philosophy. Absolutely. He would, uh, I, I, without uh, showing disrespect, I suspect that uh, uh, President Trump has not read any of the opinions of Gorsuch or uh, Kavanaugh, but you can be very sure that his advisors who are advising him on judicial appointments have, and they know exactly what, where these uh, judges stand on important issues. What made you want to write this book at this moment? Well, Eisenhower and, and Warren are two of our greatest leaders of the 20th century. Uh, Eisenhower, a great military hero, president of the United States. Warren, I think, one of our greatest chief justices. And the fact that they disagreed on such important issues, such as civil rights uh, and how to go about uh, the implementation of desegregation was very important in the 1950s, and the fact is it still is. Absolutely. Well, it's a fascinating read, interesting to dig into the dynamic between these two true titans of American history. Um, Professor James Simon, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll have more Rising after this.